Let me read to you a passage from the 14th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel, verses 1 to 6. It's the Gospel for Friday of the 30th week in Ordinary Time, Year 2. St. Luke writes, One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. There in front of him was a man suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. So, taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him on his way. Then he asked them, If one of you has a child or an ox that falls into, a ground, into the well on the Sabbath day, Will you not immediately pull it out? And they had nothing to say. That's from Luke chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. And what does it suggest to us? Well, our scene today occurs on a Sabbath. Presumably, the synagogue service was over now, and presumably our Lord had spoken at length to the assembled congregation. We read elsewhere in the Gospels that on the Sabbaths our Lord spoke in the synagogue of the town where he happened to be, and so it would have been on this day too. The Sabbath was also a time of rest and appropriate celebration, and so our Lord was invited to the house of a leading Pharisee. Others, Pharisees and experts in the law, were also present and one would imagine that they were keen to know our Lord up close, to converse with him perhaps, themselves, and to watch how he performed. We are told in the Gospel of St. John that Jesus had no need of anyone to tell him what was in a man, for he could read their hearts. And so our Lord was perfectly aware of the suspicious and critical attitude of his hosts, and yet, he cordially accepted the invitation. It shows our Lord's cordiality, his magnanimity, his openness to all, his calm fearlessness before critics who would, he knew, become implacable in their hostility to him. And so he went to dine in the house of the leading Pharisee, who had with him several of his set. Let us, in our hearts, gaze on the Son of God made man, reclining at table, eating in the midst of the company. He is the perfect embodiment of holiness. Indeed, he is its source. And there in front of him, a man with a serious swelling of the body presented himself asking to be cured. Our Lord knew his company was watching him, to see what he would do on the Sabbath day. Perhaps they had even indirectly encouraged the sick person to present himself, or perhaps placed no obstacle before him. In any case, our Lord asked them all if it was lawful to heal someone on the Sabbath. They dared not answer him, none of them at all. They knew that no one had ever bettered our Lord in debate. So he proceeded to cure the man of his ailment and sent him off. Our Lord then turned to them all and gave his example of a child or an ox being rescued from difficulty on the Sabbath day. Again, they were silent. Our Lord dominated the entire situation all of the scriptures, both Old and New Testaments, are inspired by God and so are to be regarded as the most incomparable of all writings penned by man. Penned by man, the scriptures were, but authored ultimately by the Holy Spirit. Granted this, nevertheless, some parts of the scriptures are of greater import than others, and the most important parts of, script, of the scriptures are the Gospels, because they directly present the person 
the words, the teaching and the actions of the Redeemer, God the Son become man. In them, the reader can contemplate the person of Jesus, and by means of this contemplation, his contemplation of Jesus, come to know him and love him. And so it is today. We contemplate the person of Jesus in our gospel scene, reclining at the meal in the house of the leading Pharisee, and calmly entering into dialogue with his many critics among them. For the one who has discovered the person of Christ, it is somewhat of a mystery how he, goodness itself, evoked such hostility and suspicion. It is the mystery of sin. Christ is there, and in his miracle on behalf of the sick man, is manifesting both his divine power, so effortlessly exercised, and by means of that power, he is revealing his love responding to human need. The power of God shows itself in deeds of mercy. The teaching of the Old Testament that God is rich in mercy is manifested and fulfilled in the person of Jesus. Christ shows himself in his dialogue with the Pharisee to be engaging, refined, far superior in intellect to his enemies and critics and all the while charitable to all. In a word, he is perfect, the perfect man. There is naturally a reluctance, of course, to consider anyone perfect, because despite our anti-dogmatic culture in all things religious, we implicitly accept that man is profoundly flawed. We can see it from ordinary experience of ourselves and others. We implicitly accept the doctrine of original sin in some form, but in the case of Jesus Christ, there we have the perfect man. On one occasion, our Lord instructed his disciples to be perfect, for their heavenly Father was perfect. He was placing before them what was to be their constant ideal, but he was the embodiment of that ideal. Our scene today has Christ in the centre. On one side, there are those who are not with him. On the other, though here unmentioned, are those who are with him, his disciples. Now that is the choice. To be with him, or not to be with him. Let us make our choice to be with him. And let us renew that choice every day. Living it out with all our hearts. Let us make Christ our love, the love of our life, and filled more and more with this love, let us live our lives, our daily lives, accordingly.